Hello, this is Greg Allison from Green Greg's Garden Worm Farm coming to you from a sweet gum tree. A sweet gum tree that's between my log barn, you can see the logs from this side, and my remnants of the DCX rocket. Yes, don't everybody have a rocket in their backyard? <laughs> anyway, so this is the bark of a sweet gum tree. Greg, why do I care about sweet gum? Because sweet gum, uh, you can tap into it and it will produce a sap that you can chew on. But it's not sweet, it just happens to be sweeter than black gum, or not as bitter maybe. It's not sweet at all, so the name is a funny, humorous name that they call it sweet gum. But you can chew it and it has some nutritional value. But the key thing about sweet gum is that it produces a medicinal, a medicinal known as shikimic acid. And shikimic acid is the key ingredient in Tamiflu. And uh, so Tamiflu type antiviral can be made from the ingredients from a sweet gum tree. And the key thing that we usually use to make them is those little green balls. Now, I'm gonna show you a smaller tree where you can see the leaves. Because this tree is so big and oh, so high up we can't even see the leaves from here. And there's a lot of other trees growing around here. So I'm going to take you in the back and show you a smaller sweet gum tree. And we're going to talk about sweet gum trees and I'm going to take you indoors. And I found just one little green ball here today. I'm going to show you how to process it to make the equivalent of Tamiflu that you can use to keep your family safe against the flu, hopefully. So I'm going to do a lot more videos on wild medicinals and wild edibles how to grow your own food, how to uh, grow indoors and outdoors, uh, in aquaponics greenhouses, in your house, microgreens, different things, uh, so that you can survive, thrive, and stay alive. And so that's the object of this channel. And also I do a lot of videos on things that may be threats and why you need to be aware and why you need to strive to survive, thrive, and stay alive. So. Be sure, if you've not subscribed to my channel, subscribe, bang the up notification bell, and please do support my channel by checking the links below because I sell worms. And worms are a key ingredient for you to be able to make ingredients for your own garden, your own fertilizer, and pest, the pest repellents to uh, be able to grow your garden. If, should the day come, you can't go to the store and buy those things. And besides, it's great to re recycle your own waste. It makes the best compost and best ingredients you'll ever put in your plants, house plants, potted plants, garden, whatever the case may be. And you can grow a lot of food in your house and in pots if you so try. So, all that said, there's also a link to uh, True Leaf Market below for uh, heirloom seeds, because you gotta remember, heirloom seeds are the seeds that you can uh, replant once you've uh, harvested the seeds from your plants and then grow the same plant over again. The hybrid seeds from the other seeds will not let you do that. And for survival and prepping, do check my Patriot Supply Bill. Great deals there. Uh, anyway, so let's go to the back and look and see what those leaves look like. This is a young sweet gum tree. Look at the leaves. Well, now look at the bark on here. See how this has got this bark that's sticking out? Not on the trunk. So sometimes they do this. That is a sweet gum tree. But you can do it. The leaves are very characteristic. Once you look at these leaves, they're little stars. And what you can see is they're five pointed stars. That's the leaf of the sweet gum tree. Okay, these are the balls of the sweet gum tree. These little balls are rich in shikimic acid. Shikimic acid is the active ingredient in Tamiflu. It is antiviral. Viruses use RNA instead of DNA to replicate. The shikimic acid uh, inhibits the replication of RNA. Therefore, the shikimic acid helps stop the virus. It's kind of interesting, the ancients always thought to look after a plant or something in nature that looked like the body part or the whatever they intended to heal. And of course, they had no idea what a virus looked like, but it is kind of interesting that the sweet gum ball looks a lot like, indeed, a virus. Now these are already a little bit old, starting to uh, turn color on the tips. I harvested these when they were really green a couple days ago 
and they turn real fast so you don't want to wait too long before you start processing. The shikimic acid is richest in the seeds. The seeds uh, have both uh, uh, fertile and infertile seeds inside the sweet gum burr, sweet gum ball, whatever you want to call it. The uh, uh, seeds with the wings on them, if you know some more mature plants what that might look like, would be the, would be the uh, fertile seeds. So if you could just separate out the infertile seeds, the ones without the wings, they aren't expected to fly away and make new little trees, then you would have richer shikimic acid. However, all of this has shikimic acid in it. Uh, Tamiflu originated from, from herbally from the use of the star anise plant which grows in China. But the star anise plant has on occasion run in real short supply. Luckily for us, sweet gum trees in most parts of this country are nowhere near in short supply. In fact, most people hate them. And I did myself. Uh, I thought, what in the world are these plants any good for except for to have something to step on? And then I've discovered, oh, well, <laughs> this is a major medicinal. Uh, not only is this uh, an antiviral, but it's also an anti-inflammatory. And it's supposed to be good against blood pressure. Now, many other parts of the uh, sweet gum tree are effective medicinally. The leaves and the inner bark called the cambium labor. See my video about eating parts of a pine tree. So, I'm going to try to cut this up a little bit. Now, if I had a heavier blade, it would work better or something better to hit it with. I uh, could try this with my hammer and I will try to smash these a little bit with my hammer directly. So this may jar the video, hope you can bear with me because there's nothing uh, too neat about cutting this stuff up and uh, things didn't want to slide. If it, had a, it might be better if I had a hammer that had a straight back on it. You can see, maybe, I don't know, this light isn't so great here. Let me put the camera around. You might see the seeds down in here a little bit. The inside of that. So hope you bear with me, the movement of the camera, the earthquake that we're having here, the video earthquake. Sorry about that. So now I got a little piece, and you want this cut up as fine as you get. Now I got a little notch cut in here. If it'll sit straight, I might use that to help uh, cut it. Of course, this thing's just try, trying to cut a roly ball. If I had just a, some hammers have a sharp. Uh, blade on the back, that would probably be the excellent best way to do this, but not that. So since that's flatter, I'm just going to set it down, maybe it'll set straighter that way. You know, laying up, having a rolly ball is it, something you cut, is always the easiest thing in the world. There we go. Now you can see the seeds better. Hopefully. Get this out of the light. See the seeds in here. If you pull them out, you can see in more detail. Uh, in a burr that's uh, turned brown already, the seeds will be more mature. These are on the way to that, and I'm going to cut this up in as many pieces as I can. And I'm going to smash it some because the finer I cut it, the uh, better it will, easier it will be to extract the shikimic acid. It's much easier from smaller pieces than from larger pieces. And so I'm just trying to produce more surface area from this burr fruit, uh, whatever you want to call this ball from the sweet gum tree. Now say I'm using a new hammer. It's just clean it except for the wrap that was on it. That's probably isn't the best thing to do to my cutting board. But it works. So I can also Take this and smash it up a little bit with a hammer directly. I want to cut it first. Ah! There you go. Maybe you can see the seeds. And now we're going to smash it a little bit. Of course, this is where it gets messy when you're smashing things. Oh, a lot of juice when you smash it. And for the moment, Put these over here. You know what? I was going to put them all in this bowl. I changed my mind. I'm going to go straight to the jar. Yeah, this is a big jar, bigger than what I probably need. Just an old pickle jar that I washed out. Now, if these little fruits are not 100% clean, it isn't going to matter because I'm using a. Uh, see the jar I'm using. I'm sorry. I'm using a. Uh, 
pure grain alcohol in this. Here's one I'm cutting. This will be easy to cut. We don't need a stem, although the stem will work too. You know, the inner bark, the stems, the leaves all have some shikimic acid. Now the thing I'm going to tell you is the shikimic acid level in a star anise runs about 7%. The shikimic acid, oh, anise, yeah, that means it's actually uh, got kind of a licorice, any anise has a licorice flavorish to it. You know, it's like uh, your uh, mint family uh, an basil anise, anise basil, whatever you call it. It's also got a licorice flavor, and it grows like crazy around here. So the, um, uh, this stuff has a shikimic acid level of about, three, three and a half percent, about half of what the star anise has. But this is so plentiful, it still works great. So the key thing about uh, using a Tamiflu substance, the, uh, from either sweet gum or from the star anise, is to know that the sooner you use it, the better. You want to try to catch it within the first 48 hours if you can, because that will really help stop the viruses from breeding. That's going to be earthquakes on the video. My apologies. So, just trying to get it to juice up a little bit. And I'm putting these again in this jar. And I'm going to cover them all in the alcohol in a moment. Okay. I've got all this uh, sweet gum burrs smashed up. I'm about to apply the alcohol. First, I thought I'd show you some seeds. So, I saved a few of the seeds here. So, I'm getting close to them. There we go. These little seeds, these two have wings on them. See the wings? These two do not. So these have the more shikimic acid than these. So I did. I wanted you to see that. So what I want, also want you to know is that you can make a tea out of the out of these burrs, out of the cambium layer in the sweet gum. But what I'm going to do is make a tincture. The reason I'm you, know, you can boil it, and make a tea. But I'm using this pickle jar here, which has been washed out, and it will be double re-sanitized by the use of this alcohol here. I'm not endorsing any brand. The key thing is, uh, for the tincture, the alcohol does two things. One, it draws the shikimic acid out of the sweet gum burrs, and two, it preserves it. But to preserve it, you want to make sure that the mixture in here, after it's applied, is over 100 proof. Bear in mind, these are green, so they actually have a fair bit of water in it. So to make sure that that's the case, I use pure grain alcohol. And the proof on this is 190 proof. So I'm quite confident when I cover this stuff that I want to have much higher than a uh, 100 proof mixture here. Now you could stir it for bubbles, I guess, and determine the proof level on it. But I'm going to do a good little coverage. Make sure we got this all covered 100%. And no, I didn't do a precise measure of it. But I am going to jam down one little piece here. The key thing is, I got it covered. And I see a little stem sticking up. I don't want anything sticking up here. I don't want any germs to survive inside that mixture. That is what is key. That's why you want a good mix of alcohol. That's why I put so much in here to cover it real good is so that after the moisture seeps out of this it will still be over 100 proof and given it's 190 proof even if it just covered to this level it ought to work just fine. So how you uh, extract this is you wait about six weeks to let this do its work. Just put it in a nice cool dark place. Six weeks later you come back and strain that out and this stuff will last you all year long after that until the next time you need to harvest this stuff and how to dose with it well I've seen various things I've seen stuff you uh, say to put 20 to 30 doses uh, drops depending on the size of a person but I've also heard use up to you know half a teaspoon maybe a little bit more well a half a teaspoon more well, a teaspoon uh, according to standard drops is about 98 drops a half a teaspoon you know would be something in the order of about 46 drops in. So that's a big uh, uh, departure in numbers. 
so I'll leave it to, to you to research but I'd say 20 drops uh, to maybe 30 is probably what you ought to plan it on or, or maybe no more than a half teaspoon and see how that works for you so that's the recommendations my disclaimers are I'm not a medical doctor I'm not a medical professional. I'll take it to your doctor, ask your doctor. Of course, your doctor's going to tell you to use his medicine, but, <laughs> you know, I have to say these things. I've got to give you the disclaimer. I'm not a medical doctor. I always consult with a local plant expert before you use any plants or plant parts, uh, before you put any plant in your mouth, because any among the plant world, many plants are good and good for you and can help, uh, help with a lot of illnesses, but uh, on the other side, uh, many plants can kill you make you sick so uh, and you really got to be able to distinguish them apart so don't put any plant in your mouth or use any plant part that you don't know absolutely what it is always consult a local expert and consult your doctor for any medical advice uh, but again this stuff will extract shikimic acid shikimic acid is the principal ingredient of Tamiflu now those are those are the facts now how much like I said this is supposed to be like three three and a half percent about half of the star anise level so there you go this uh, uh, I think is of high value and uh, knowledge of these kind of skills are what you're going to need when the grid goes down uh, you'll need to know how to produce your own medicinals you and you know I I don't like to use big pharma personally uh, I'm telling you this is not a doctor's recommendation just my personal choice uh, I really like personally and this is no advice to you whatsoever to use uh, herbal products but that's my personal choice and not advice to anyone or any kind of recommendation I don't make recommendations for anything medicinal that said this my friends will make shikimic acid uh, come out of these burrs I'll strain it out so I hope you like this video please first subscribe to my channel and click the update notification bell and check my links below because I have a lot of good products to offer uh, I do sell worms so if you want to grow your own garden and be able to produce your own fertilizer uh, and garden soil which is better than any potting soil or fertilizer you'll buy just from your own kitchen waste yard clippings and things like that scrap paper uh, worms are the way to go worm castings, worm tea I sell the worms, I do videos on raising them and on making worm tea much more of that to come. Uh, you can also uh, do, check out my links to my Patriot Supply for pepper supplies. The prices of food are expected to really skyrocket soon. And to grow your own seeds, I've shot a lot of videos from this countertop on raising microgreens, food that you can grow in your own home. And uh, so check those videos out and go to True Leaf Market. True Leaf Market, link below, sells heirloom seeds and everything you need to grow your own microgreens. So I appreciate you watching this. Thank you very much for watching.